Now, after the events of Little Round Top, <clears throat> um, some people actually think the battle was over at that point. No, what had been going on was the actual attack of the Confederates on the second day it was what was called an echelon attack. What that means is everything moves in sequence. Hood would start in the south, and then McClaws, and then Anderson, moving up to Ewell's Corps. And so on the south, we know how it ended there with, you know, Hood and McClaws not able to take those rocky heights, they moved to Anderson's division. Now, Anderson's division was under General A.P. Hill's corps. Now, the way this kind of worked was Lee detached Anderson to serve under Longstreet on this. So, A.P. Hill, thinking that I'm not in charge of Anderson in this particular encounter, he chose to not give Anderson any direction at all. And Longstreet was under the opinion that a, this guy's under A.P. Hill's corps, so he didn't direct him either. And Anderson took another uh, particular position that because he wasn't getting direction from either side, he wasn't going to make a decision much at all. And he left the uh, coordination of the attack on Cemetery Hill to his commanders, to his brigade commanders. And so what had happened is some of his commanders actually headed, headed uh, across the open field to Cemetery Hill. Now, some Posey went forward and he stopped. Mahone didn't move at all because he claimed that he had direct orders from Anderson to not move. Even though a courier had come to Mahoney saying that Anderson said to move forward, Mahoney stayed put under the shade of the trees. And so Wilcox pushed forward. And in a surprise turn of events, he actually broke the line and actually was had his troops on top of the hill of Cemetery Ridge for a short period of time. But because of lack of support, federal reinforcements basically hit them very hard and they were forced to withdraw. They actually broke the Union line at one point. Because of lack of support, it didn't come to anything more than that. They had to withdraw. And on the north, when the rest of the echelon attack happened on the north, with Rhodes and... Actually, Rhodes actually was... His troops were all stuck in Gettysburg. He didn't actually do anything much that day. And plus, because of his screw-ups the day before, and charging in too, too crazy and too fast, I guess he was reluctant. So he didn't really do much on the second day and so early's division actually pushed forward into the north area of gettysburg and down the area of cemetery hill from the north and one of early's brigades under general hayes actually did the exact same thing he broke through the federal line on cemetery hill as well and was in a perfect position to really exploit the gap and really take advantage of it but he didn't get any support either Gordon and Avery and others, they did not support him, so nothing came of that either. So the Confederates actually broke two different lines of the, of the Union position on Cemetery Hill on the second day. But because, it didn't, um, as Lee would later notice, that the attacks were not properly coordinated, that would be, be a major problem. They, they didn't work together to make sure that it worked. And around this same time, who kind of showed up on the battlefield was General Stewart, a long-lost cavalry officer. And he saw General Lee at the end of the second day. And there have been various accounts, some people say, of what was said to Lee and Stewart, what they said back and forth. All we know for sure is that Lee, when Lee's annoyed, you know, sometimes he explodes like all people do. But at the same time, a lot of times what he would do in his more refined moments is he would, he would do what was called icy cold formality. Where he would speak to you very, he would pull something up to his full height and just speak to you very firmly. And that's how Lee did it. And all we know for sure was that Lee said to Stewart was, General Stewart, you are here. Which, putting it in our own terms, that'd be the equivalent of most people would say nowadays of where the expletive have you been. But Lee didn't talk like that. So there are various accounts on some people say, like even Shelby Foote said in his book on the Civil War, that some people said that he said this, some people said he said that. But even later on in an interview, he would actually go on to say that no one knows for sure what was said between Lee and Stewart. All we know is that, uh, you know, Lee never, they never spoke of it. Lee never, didn't write it down in any sort of memoirs, and Stewart would not survive the end of the war. But all we know is that there was, it had to have been a major discussion between the two of why Stewart left the irregular troops with Lee when Lee would not use them. Why he left Beverly Robertson and Grumble Jones in Virginia when Lee desperately needed them. So I would not want to have quite really been Stuart in that particular situation. So those are some of the situations I was coming down toward the end of the second day of the battle. There you go.